we'll come back to the perspective. Now, Hugh, before we get uh, back to the interesting times in Indonesia, uh, how, how do you think traditional business like Marriott and other uh, hospitality industry is catching up fast enough uh, to catch up or to close up the gap between them and uh, the likes of Airbnb? Yeah. The, the problem with traditional companies is mm. they have legacy and they, they have to bring that legacy along mm. with them. But they are doing things to become learning from the, these startups. Yeah. For instance, in the uh, financial sector, there are these companies called fintechs. Okay, they're small companies and mm -hmm. they provide maybe some sort of financial services. Mm -hmm. They're now they're disparate and they're not organized. Yeah. Okay, but if they were to organize and consolidate onto a platform like Alibaba or Amazon mm -hmm. or Baidu, mm -hmm. uh, they could be a real force in the uh, financial sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I was in New York recently and as I'm leaving the financial center in Manhattan and driving yeah. to the airport, yeah. JFK, there's a huge billboard that has seven words on it. The words are, the future of banking is no banks. Okay. okay so that's kind of a, a scary yeah. thing for yeah. bankers yeah. To, to hear. But that may happen unless the bankers are able to reconnect more with their end users. Yeah. Okay. Now, Goldman Sachs, for instance, they hired the, an executive from Lending Club to head up their marketplace lending. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to learn and build this. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and uh, we're the banks here. I mean, uh, uh, BCA, the largest bank, of course, they have ClickPay, right? Yep. So this helps uh, startups like, uh, was it uh, Go Gojek? Gojek. Gojek, mm -hmm. right? They can, their, their customers can pay with uh, ClickPay. Yeah. Okay. So they are trying to tap into this, and they are working with it, not to, to try to fight them off yeah. because that's not going to win. But to piggyback. But uh, to work with them. Yeah. Yes. To piggyback yeah. with yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Now, Indonesia is inter at in interesting times. Yes. As uh, I said earlier, that Jokowi has been very robust and very uh, <coughs> um, aggressive in uh, leading the nation to transforming into the digital era. Mm -hmm. Why do you say in, it's an interesting time in Indonesia at the moment? Yes, well, it, it, the geography is something, right? Do we have so many people here, you know, in, in uh, spread out in so many geographies? And uh, the way to connect them then is through this, the internet. Yeah. I mean, things like we have mobile phones now, and we have data plans, and we have ways of uh, transferring money or paying mm -hmm. over the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it, Tokopedia? Tokopedia. Tokopedia, right? Mm -hmm they kind of have an escrow for buyers and sellers yeah. so you can safely buy and sell things yeah. and individuals can buy and sell yeah. things okay th again the individual becomes now a prosumer he can produce and he can consume mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so these are interesting things that are happening in, in indonesia mm -hmm. uh, i think mm -hmm. the e-commerce in indonesia is growing faster than anywhere else in the world mm -hmm. okay because of your geography kind of yeah. makes it it requires you to be able to do that yeah but it's also creating this innovation. Uh, you know, the companies we mentioned like, um, you know, like uh, Tokopedia mm -hmm. and uh, Gojek. Gojek. So, um, um, and then the banks, and I see, you know, like the banks going into ClickPay and, and mm -hmm. learning from the startups, mm -hmm. the FinTechs, mm -hmm. to learn how we work with them, not mm -hmm. to try to stop them because you won't be able to stop them. Mm. And it's even more crucial for the banking <coughs> system here in Indonesia because they have to expand their, uh, uh, allow um, them to be more accessible in mm -hmm. regional areas, uh, less developed, uh, the rural areas here in yeah. Indonesia. Yeah, that the, the less developed areas are where they can really make headway. Yeah. So my father was a farmer mm -hmm. in, the, in uh, California. Mm -hmm. And whenever we needed to plant things or harvest things, we went to the bank mm -hmm. and we got a loan. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the harvest was not good and we mm -hmm. had to extend the loan. So the farmer and the banker worked together. Yeah. And we knew the banker. Yeah. Okay, he was part of our, our business, our family. Yeah. Now today in the US, farming is all done by corporations. Wow. And the individual can no longer get Survive. a personal loan, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to have a house or a car mm -hmm. or some valuable property to mm -hmm. put up, uh, but, but you know, in here, I, I believe there's still more farmers, mm -hmm. like my father, mm -hmm. who, who need that, want that personal relationship mm -hmm. with a banker. Yeah. And now with tools like the internet and things like that, mm -hmm. smartphones, we can provide that here. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what I think uh, the Jokowi administration is doing uh, through uh -huh. its uh, small loans, uh, because yes. they still see a huge market for a maybe shorter or lo a l a longer period of time that these farmers can still interact with with, with their uh -huh. banks. Now, 
Um, infrastructure is always a, an issue um, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, making sure that ec economic growth is, is, is guaranteed. What about, about here in Indonesia, in, in, concerning data systems in Indonesia, what, what your observation of the infrastructure here? Well, you know, I've talked to a number of CIOs this week, and all of them are talking about IT transformation. Okay? If you look at the traditional data center or IT infrastructure, yeah. it's sort of like a triangle. Mm -hmm and more than 50% of that capacity is around infrastructure cost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that the value is in the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Some of it was about the, the platforms, yep. but very little of it was addressed to the user, the mm -hmm. end user, mm -hmm. through applications mm -hmm. and analytics. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is turn that triangle upside down. All right. Okay, and this way, the infrastructure it requires less attention, but that means we have to automate it, yep. you know, virtualize it, converge it, so that it doesn't take all of um, uh, IT's attention, mm -hmm. and then, but that that infrastructure is important because mm -hmm. I call it the tip of the spear. Yep. If you don't have the right infrastructure, you can't scale out the platforms and yep. the applications. Yep. But we're all going through this where we're, the value we realize now is in the customer-facing applications mm -hmm. and uh, analytics, mm -hmm. and that's where we're going through this transformation. Mm -hmm. Now, this is challenging because in the old way where we mostly focused on infrastructure, infrastructure. we created storage administrators, server administrators, right. network administrators, all Physical these infrastructure, yeah. silos, yeah. okay? So now we need to destroy those, eliminate those silos <coughs> and make it a converged solution. Mm -hmm. All right, now we'll talk more about that uh, in regards to Indonesia on The Perspective, we'll be right back.